Rick, what were you going through personally when you lost your arm? I mean, did you, did you ever doubt for a minute that you wouldn't be able to play drums again? Yeah, you I did. did. It was horrible. Uh, I did. I just wanted to disappear. But then I found, really, I found that the power of the human spirit and the guys and my family uh, and everybody was just behind me. It was, uh, it, w- it was really special. Is it true your drum kit weighs a tremendous amount of, of weight because you had to go and then reinvent the way you played drums? Right. Um, it, 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 the, the one I've got now, uh, does. Yeah. Why does the drum kit have to weigh so much more than a regular drum kit? Um, I keep it, falling into it. You yeah, keep... yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just that, um, I, I like it set up, uh, exactly the same every night. So what they do is they, they bolt it down to this, uh, this, this sort of steel plate. Right. So that everything just travels as it, as it's set up. So every night they just take the lid off the thing and. And uh, sometimes they leave me in there. <laughs> it's a, it's a, but, it, but it's a remarkable story in the in, of human spirit that, you, like, w- at first you say, I'm never going to play the drums again. Fuck it. I'm never going to go near a drum kit uh, after the accident. And then at some point do you say, I'm going to go try? You, you, you're absolutely I stopped comparing myself to how I used to play. And I stopped comparing myself to others. And I went, what I do is really unique. Go with that. Right. And it really, it, to, it was such a weight lifted. And at what point after the accident do you go and sit down at a drum kit and try to play the drums? Um, they said I'd be in hospital for, you know, a good six months or whatever. I got out uh, within within a month and then drove, uh, somebody drove me straight to uh, this this place. This, this guy, um, uh, Pete Hartley, he was building these pedals for me. So I went straight to his store sat down for about three or four minutes, played the thing. I was exhausted um, because I, you know, obviously I'd, I'd been laid up in bed and that was it. It you was like the, that you, spark. You left the hospital after a month. I mean, you were supposed to be there for six months. Yeah. He went AWOL. Yeah. That is crazy. They said my recovery was just really quick. And uh, for whatever reason, I, I just, everything worked out. And like I say, I went straight, headed straight for the drum kit sat on the drum kit, when this is going to work, and then went home and sort of slept for a week. Was it a faulty seatbelt that caused that? Because you got thrown from the car. Yeah, the seatbelt came out, came undone as I rolled the car. I mean, you're not supposed to roll cars, but right. the seatbelt came undone, and it was the seatbelt that actually took my arm, oh. and uh, the, the sunroof was open, so I left through the sunroof, which in many ways could have been a blessing. I really don't know. Yeah. Well, but okay. I ended up in a field, and... Uh, this district nurse, she... Uh, she found you. Yeah, she was in the car behind me. Um, How lucky for you, because you could have let out and died, right? That's, you know, one of those angels on earth kind of stories you hear. Yeah, if you're going to be in a car accident, have a nurse you behind you. You couldn't make it up, could you? You just couldn't no, make no, it's it up. Cra- I heard the nurse ended up marrying the doctor who operated uh, on um, you. It was, it was actually uh, Roger and Eileen Pierce. Roger was a, a, a cop. He was off duty, and Eileen uh, was, the, was the nurse. And you yeah. should have been the priest. I know. No, you should have married them at I know, least. I know, <laughs> yeah. but it ended up being this wonderful love story. That you know, is, they, that they is got crazy. Together. You, if you wrote that in a movie, no one would believe it. Yeah. No. And you said something that really is going to, I think, stay with me. You said, yeah, you know what? I can't compare myself to whatever I used to do. I got to reinvent myself. That's yeah, what I, I mean, have to do. I still have moments of that. Like, wow, can, I ima- can you imagine what I could do if I had, you know, that, mm-hmm. what I used to have? But then I go, you know what? You're fine. It's, right. It, it, everything's going fine. Yeah. The weird thing is he's been one-armed longer than he was two-armed. I yeah. know. I, but do you ever have that shadow experience where you feel your arm? Yeah, I can feel the whole thing. Uh, Tell him the story the about the nurse. Nerve. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, um, this sounds yeah. good. It kind of had a mind of its own. It would sort of end up everywhere, and um, it just so happened that it ended up uh, going up skirt. somebody's skirt. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? When they yeah, there was like this presence when I first lost my arm. Yeah, it was it was like a physical presence. She felt it. That's the thing. Yeah. Really? Really? Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah. Wait. Are you you're being serious? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're saying you're in the hospital. Yeah. You lost your arm, but yet you could feel like it. Your arm was still there. There was it was like it was like the uh, static electricity was in the form of my arm, but I couldn't really control it. You know what I mean? And she said, I feel something going up my dress. I said, I said, can you feel, I said, I can't really control it. She said, with a, with a, with a really interesting smile on her face, she said, she said, uh, yes. Wow. I don't know what to say about that. I know. I know. Me neither. I wish I still had it. It's like a sneaky, you yeah, know, what? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make sure your wallet is zipped up. <laughs> 